What is going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today we're going to be talking about the STM32 F0 discovery board once again. So as you can see on your screen right now, I have a circuit set up which is going to be reading uh, four different analog values, but we're going to be doing that through an, a breakout board which holds the ADS1115 um, I see and essentially what that does is it allows you to have a multi-channel analog read and then it sends that data back through I squared C. So I'm going to be showing you exactly how to implement I squared C on your discovery board devices. I'm going to be walking you through the registers. We're going to go into the data sheet and kind of do uh, a very similar tutorial to what I did for the Arduino, which was on the MPU 6050 board. I'm going to be talking exactly which bits to set, how to get the data, and how to get those values on your screen. But really quickly, before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to address a common kind of concern. So a lot of you have been sending me questions through Facebook, through email. So I wanted to uh, create something a little bit better, and I came up with a forum. So if you go on my website, click on forum, then you can see there is a basic layout which I've made. And uh, Currently, I am the only one registered on the board. But if you want to post your uh, questions, you know, it's going to be easier for me to see them. It's going to be easier for you to upload the code and attach them directly to a new topic. It's going to be easier um, for you to kind of put in images than for me to try and reply through Facebook. So if you do want to uh, get in touch with me, I think it's a better, a, a much better means. Um, that way, you know, other people can also put in their input in case I don't have the answer. So. Uh, yeah, make sure to check it out. Make sure to uh, go through this link right here. And without any further delay, let's get started on the tutorial. All right, so let's start off with the hardware configuration. As you can see, I have everything breadboarded right here. And we're currently looking at the data sheet, which shows all of the pins of the ADS1115, which is the IC that you can see on this breakout board here. You can get it on uh, eBay, Amazon for a couple of bucks. So just quickly looking at the sort of the pins that we have. So obviously for the I squared C communication, we have our clock and then we have our data pins. That's going to be 10 and 9 and they're uh, very well labeled on the breakout board. So I have no doubt that you can assemble the circuits. Uh, we're going to be using 5 volts for our power. So that's connected through the red bus. Obviously the ground is shown in black. And then you have four different analog read channels. So analog in zero, one, two, and three. Once again, they're very well broken out on the uh, circuit that you can see right here. So you'll have uh, no trouble connecting those whatsoever. And then I believe there's an address pin which I'm connecting to ground as well because you can connect. So the way you address this IC is you can have it, you can have that address pin connected either to ground, to volts, uh, meaning to your uh, input power, to SCL or SDA to give it a different address. We're going to look at that in uh, just a second, but in my case, I do have it connected to ground. And then, uh, like I said, the four signals that we're getting. So I have a potentiometer here and then I have three on the breadboard broken out. You can see the blue cabling going to them as well. Let me really quickly show you. So this is the SDM studio, which allows you to essentially see the different variables. And it's extremely useful for debugging. It's essentially like the serial monitor for your Arduino and it allows you to pull uh, to pull some of these variables back on your screen and see what they are on the uh, controller itself and I'll show you how to configure that later on but really quickly let's do a quick demo so if I you know if I adjust these potentiometers so this is the fourth one that you can see voltage 3 right here and the value goes up to 4.5 and that's actually accurate I've, con I've confirmed that by measuring the voltage with a multimeter uh, the board is going up to 4.5 and if I play with the third one the second one and then the first one, which I uh, put on this small board. So we go all the way to 4.5. So we're successfully reading all the four voltages through the I squared C communication back to our board. So the hardware setup is done. It should be pretty, pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at how we can program this. Take a look at more on the data sheet side and see what we need to uh, configure. All right, so since I'm going to be referring a lot to the data sheet, I think the best way to record this would be on a side by side sort of screen. And what I'm going to do here is open the STM32 CubeMX utility, 
go into a new project. Uh, let's see here, board selector, STM microelectronics, discovery, F0, like I've mentioned before, I have this FT51R8TX, in my case it's T6. Click on OK. You should be displayed with the full board momentarily. So all the pins are pre-populated. And what you need to do here to set up I squared C. So if you look on this left hand side menu, you'll see I squared C one, two. And uh, we're gonna be using one here just because that's the pins that I currently have hooked up. And as you can see, it immediately highlights the two pins that we're gonna be using, which is PB6 and PB7. So PB6 is gonna be our clock and PB7 is gonna be the data. And those are the two pins right here, if you can see on your screen, the two cables that are coming out from the board into the ADS. Um, so you're gonna be making exactly that connection. So SCL to SCL, SDA to SDA. Um, and uh, one thing you wanna notice, so um, actually let's jump back to the address that we're gonna be using. So as I've mentioned, I have this ground connected right here through this yellow cable and that goes to the ground pin, so our address is gonna be this, and this is gonna come later into play in the software. If you connect the CLO cable, like I've mentioned before, to VDD, SDA, or SCL, you'll have a different address, so pay attention to that. But on the I squared C side, you'll need to figure out for your particular device, if you're using something else, what kind of speed does it support? And uh, if we go into the section called I squared C speed modes, you'll see that the bus operates at one of the three speeds standard, which is gonna be 100 kilohertz, um, fast mode for 100 kilohertz, and then high speed mode allows 3.4 megahertz. So this particular IC supports all three of the modes, but um, if you do want to use the high speed mode, meaning the 3.4 megahertz, then you'll need, to, um, you'll need to activate it essentially. The other two are working by default. If you want the high speed one, then you'll have to go through these steps, which um, we're not gonna be covering today, but it's something that you'll need to configure right here. So if we go into configuration, connectivity, I squared C, you'll see that it is currently in standard mode and we can go into fast mode without doing anything else. So I'm gonna set that to fast mode. And as you can see, it automatically shows that as uh, 400 kilohertz, which corresponds to the specifications right there. And uh, everything else we're gonna leave intact. Uh, we should be all set on those settings right there. We're not going to be adding any different uh, kind of pins in this case. We're just going to be able to read the values. Hit apply. Hit OK. And that's pretty much all we need on the Cube MX side to... Uh, let's go into the settings. Give us... Give a meaningful name. So ADS 1115 tutorial project. Okay, and we're gonna use the RMV5. Make sure to select that correctly. Code generator, co copy only the necessary library files. Uh, let's take a look, advanced settings. Um, okay, we should be all set. Click on okay, and then project and generate code. All right, so once our project is ready in Kale, what we can do is open the application slash user folder and go down to our main in here. First thing we wanna define is the address of our uh, IC. And like I've mentioned, we're gonna be using this address. So I'm gonna copy this. Copy and then use a calculator to convert it from binary to um, hex, which is gonna be 488. And uh, what I'm gonna do here is define, so define ADS1115 underscore address to be 488. And um, yeah, so that's gonna be the address I'm gonna be using. The next thing that we wanna do is obviously, so uh, read and write for, from the IC. So if you look at the section here, reading and writing the registers to access a specific register from the ADS, uh, the master must first write an appropriate value to the pointer register. The pointer register is written directly after the slave address byte low read and write bit and a successful slave acknowledgement. So what essentially we need to do is store um, 
whatever we want to access and then whatever data we want to write in a byte segment and then that's what we're going to be sending off to the ADS. So what I'm going to do here is actually create unsigned char. Uh, it's going to be our ADS write, And let's make six of them. And uh, that's where we're going to store the binary data that we need to send to a different register or write to depending on our uh, situation. What I'm also going to do is int 16 underscore T reading. So I'm going to store readings that I uh, get from all of these analog channels back into the pr processor. And uh, this is going to be an int 16. What else do we need? So we'll need uh, the voltages, of course, so four different um, voltages, which are going to store the voltage for each different potentiometer. Um, so that's going to be array of four floats. And last but not least, so we need to figure out how to convert um, the signal that we get from ADS in uh, into a voltage reading. So that is done here. So if you go into the scale, um, so you can see that bits 11 to nine of this particular register are gonna allow us to select our different scale. So obviously, since we're gonna be going above four, uh, we want to select this one, and that's gonna allow us to give a resolution of plus and minus 6.144 volts. And we need to perform the conversion from the analog from the reading, like I said, to the voltage and thus we need to do this uh, constant float, constant float, voltage, conv, and voltage, conv, and that's going to be equal to 6.114 divided by 32768. Um, that's because that's the number of um, if you do two to the times uh, 15, I believe, bits that we get, uh, you will get uh, that number. So those are kind of the constants and the variables we're going to be setting up for this particular tutorial. All right. So there's many different ways to obtain the data from the ADS1115. But uh, the way I'm going to be doing this is essentially going through uh, the main loop and sequentially requesting data from the correct analog input. And uh, so the way we need to do this is if I go into my while function, I'm going to be creating a for loop here, which is going to first set this configuration register to the appropriate channel and then read from this conversion register the data that has been um, transferred through the IC. So the first thing that I'm going to do, of course, is so the way we address our IC is we need to write First of all, the address of the register, and then we need to write whatever we want to write to that register in the um, bytes that I've allocated above. So the way that's going to look is ADS write of zero. So into the first section, what that's going to look like is 0x01. And the reason for, for that 0x01 is because you have two registers. So the first one is the conversion register, which is going to be zero, zero, and then the configuration register, register to which we want to write uh, initially is going to be zero, one. Then, like I've mentioned, we're going to have this uh, for loop, which we're going to create to configure the next bits. Or int i is equal to zero, i smaller than four, i plus plus very simple for for loop. And uh, inside of this loop, what we're going to do is um, essentially uh, go through the four settings. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So the we're going to switch our I and we're going to have case zero. And in case zero, we're trying to get the analog read from the first um, from the first analog input. So this is going to be ADS write of one, which is going to be the next eight bits that we're going to write. And uh, let's take a look at the eight bits. So 
As you notice, the configuration register is essentially 16 bits long, and uh, thus we need to create two separate bytes of uh, data in order to write to that register. So let's take a look at all of these first uh, eight bits. And if we scroll down a little bit more, let's see bit 15, which is gonna be uh, right here. And operational status, single shot conversion start, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we want to begin a single conversion. So I'm gonna put a one there for bit 15. Bits 14 through 12 are the input multiplexer configuration. And notice that it's only for this ADS1115. And in my case, I want to read the voltage between the input zero and the ground. So what I need to select is this particular, so I need to set these three bits to 100 or 100. Um, programmable game gain amplifier configuration, very important. So we're gonna be using, like I've mentioned before, 6.144 as, um, as our range. So we want to set the next three bits to zeros. And uh, last but not least, for these eight bits, bit eight is gonna be device operating mode. So you can use the continuous conversion mode, which is gonna be constantly asking for data on that channel, but we're gonna be doing the default, which is gonna be single shot, and that equates to one. So if I control C, go into my binary, control V, go into hex, that's gonna be equivalent to a C1, so zero X C1. Next, we will need to configure, so break case one, ADS, right? Um, so in case we want to request data from the next channel, we're going to, um, so let's really quickly go through that exercise once again. The only thing that we really need to change among those eight bits, so let's copy them here. So these are the eight bits for the first one. For the second one, we need to write this uh, AIN one and ground. So that's gonna be 101 instead of the 100. So it's gonna be this. And uh, a really quick calculation tells you that it's instead of C, it's gonna be D, but let's go and convert that anyways. So that's gonna be D1, zero X D1. And that's going to break in case two, yes, right, one equals two, zero X. So similarly going forward, it's gonna be, we want to get this channel and then this channel and it just increments by one in binary. So it's gonna be E one and then break case three. Uh, case three, it's going to be ADS, right? It's going to be equal to zero X F1. Break. And we're going to close the, the switch statement. That. Okay, so the switch statement is good. So we're switching through each one of those cases and uh, making sure that is correct. So actually, let's put that inside a for loop as well before the switch statement. Um, okay, and then the last, so there's, like I mentioned, there's 16 bits total. So we also need to write the least significant bits, ADS write two. And uh, let's take a look at those really quickly. Uh, so seven through five is gonna be the data rate. The default is fine. Let's put a hundred in there. Uh, comparator, we're not using that. So I've used all the defaults. So it's gonna be zero, zero, zero. And then the last default is one, one. Zero, 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 one, one. And really quickly convert that from binary to hex. And that's gonna be 83, zero x 83. Um, so that way, but essentially we're writing to this, let's scroll back up really quickly. So configuration register. So the address of the register itself, and then the first eight bits are going to be stored here in ADS write one. And the next eight bits are going to be stored in ADS write two. Um, the next step, so we actually need to write that through an I squared C command and we have 
a very good implementation here for the discovery board master transmit first we have an each a 2c1 this is a piece of data that's created at uh, startup by, by cubemx the next thing is the address ads so we've created this address it's going to be shifted by one bit just because of the specifications in that library comma uh, we will need to specify what we're trying to write so that's going to be ads write and we're going to write three bytes of that data so like i've mentioned the register address and then the two bytes for the configuration timeout is going to be 100 milliseconds um and then so once we've set that configuration register our next task is to retrieve the data from the conversion register and in order to retrieve data we need to write once again to that register before it sends us the data back so to speak so what we're going to do here is reset the data reset the i mean the address ads write zero that we said before to the other one zero x um, zero zero in this case and uh, request so we're going to write to it first hull underscore a to c same thing as we have above master underscore transmit and hi to c1 ads so the address first shifted by one bit ads write comma in this case we just need to send one byte 100 for the timeout okay so we've sent the data but now we need to so let's do a delay we'll wait for the conversion to finish delay 20 milliseconds i think it's fine um hall underscore i to c underscore master underscore receive so in this case we're receiving data and again this is very similar h i to c1 comma the address ads address shifted by one and we're going to store the data that we receive in the buffer just because we're going to reset it every cycle anyway so there's no real reason for us to do um to do a specific routine for this so ads right and we're going to receive two bytes of data because this register is um 16 bits long so 100 and at this point so at this point we should have all of our data from each chat from one of the channels in that particular uh in those particular bytes but we need to convert that to a real voltage something that actually means uh, something to us so what i'm going to do here is Create this reading, um, which is going to be equal to ADS right of zero shifted by eight. And I made a tutorial on this, like why this is done. So essentially, we're taking the eight bits, we're shifting it over, and then we're putting the other eight bits uh, sequentially because uh, we want to essentially it's stitching the data back into one value um getting those bits into one segment so to speak and then if just want to truncate if the reading is less than less than zero read, reading is equal to zero um because for some reason the values well it's based on the ic the values go to negative uh but we're we should not expect any negative voltages because of our ground so we're just going to set it to zero and then our voltage at i which is controlled by the for loop is going to be equal to the reading times the voltage conversion that we've declared um previously voltage conversion and uh, that's pretty much it so at this point we should have the voltage stored correctly let's see if the program compiles all right so the program compiled without any errors let's load it onto our controller and um, okay so everything's flashed let's hit the reset button like i've mentioned before you need to reset before you can do anything let's hop over to our stm studio 
very important tool. So we're going to delete all of these floats and we're going to start from scratch. So if you want to right click import and then I'm going to select the appropriate task. So we're going to go up here and ADS tutorial project MDK arm tutorial project and we're going to select this. And down here, what you're going to see is only one of them is displayed. So we're going to expand table elements and we're going to import all four of the voltages, all four floats, hit import, close. And then once again, I'm going to select all four of these, send to the VAR viewer. And if I hit play, I'm actually connected and able to see the real time values um, that are associated with those uh, with the potentiometers that I have on board here. So um, very straightforward, but a very important thing to know how to do uh, because a lot of the ICs that you're going to be dealing with are going to be on I squared C. If you guys have any questions, you know, if anything's unclear, I strongly encourage you to refer back to the data sheet. It has a lot of information, a lot more capability than what I've discussed. But this should just uh, be able to get you started. There's also a very good uh, quick start section, I believe, somewhere in the data sheet itself. Yes, there's a quick start guide. If you want to, um, if you want to go into continuous reading mode for this particular IC, they explain exactly like which bits to write. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions, like I said, post them on the forum. Make sure to go to this enthusiast.com and. Uh, Again, navigate to the forum post whatever you need done make sure to attach the code that you have if everything is working not working let me know thank you guys for watching this video if you've enjoyed the content make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below i also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that i left for you with uh, extra content last but not least leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos questions about this topic or otherwise uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time